a show that focuses on the bright side, focuses on the good things that are happening right now, despite the challenges we're facing. This is not to discount any of the challenges any of you might be going through, but it's to help you shift your focus from focusing on what's not working to focusing on what's working. And as always, I have another expert with me on the call and we're expecting one more lady to join. She's having some tech issues right now. So with me is Corinne Steiner from Switzerland. Oh, there she is. Okay, let me include Sandrine as well. Just a minute. All right, welcome Sandrine. You're live. Yay. <laughs> can you hear me well? Yes, we can yes, hear you. Well. I switched my device. I went on my computer and it worked. So thank ah. you for advice. <laughs> very good. Thank you very much for putting so much effort in, Sandrine. <laughs> welcome. So we have Cor Corinne Steiner from Switzerland. Um, Hello. The bottom left. Hello, neighbor. Can you tell us a little bit about what you do, please? So me? Corinne? Okay. Yeah, sure. So I see my purpose within that I help leaders and entrepreneurs to really enjoy their life more, more fully. And that means that they develop a healthy way of dealing with their self, with their life, with their environment and with whatever they are doing. That's actually what I'm doing. Okay, interesting. Well, they need to be dealing with their lives very well right now. So <laughs> my guess is that's in high demand in the midst of this crisis. And what about you, Sandrine? What is it that you do? So uh, I'm a coach. I'm also a practitioner in hypnosis and NLP. Mm -hmm. uh, and my main purpose is to help uh, particularly women, entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs, and also artists to unleash their full creator potential and particularly unlock their growth mindset, which is what I will talk about today. The growth mindset. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Super important. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Particularly in those times. Right. Where are you from? You're from France or are you French? So originally, I'm from France, from Paris, and I moved to Geneva five years ago. Okay. Uh, and I must say, I really enjoy uh, Geneva, particularly uh, being able to ski. Well, not at the moment, unfortunately, but in general, and I eat this outdoor ski life is really, really nice. Okay, very good. Thank you. So we have Sandrine from originally Paris, Corinne from Zurich, and myself from also Switzerland, but I'm basically, I'm... I'm Austrian, <laughs> so we're a little bit international, but more, yeah. mostly focusing on Swiss power today. <laughs> uh, I want to welcome some people on the call. Mostly focusing Oops, on Swiss sorry, power that was today. The, the wrong <laughs> button. Uh, by the way, if you want to ask some questions while we share our strategies, please do so and put them in the comments, and then we can ask them, answer them live as best we can because we want to keep this a little bit interactive and engaging. All right, so let's begin. What did you bring uh, to the table today, Corinne, for this show to share with our audience? So from my purpose of having an, a healthy way of dealing with my thing and myself, so I believe this is a really hot topic right now. And I thought what would be most helpful for people right now. And I think I need to to take a bigger circle to, to explain why it is so important right now. And it's because what we are doing usually, especially if we are under stress or under pressure, or we have a certain circumstance which changed without our um, will, then what we automatically do is we treat ourselves badly. So most people will know that if we are in stress, we do what we do, we work more, Maybe we, we sleep less, we eat badly, we, we don't move at all. And so what I do usually or what I work with my people on is how can they do something different rather than doing something which actually puts them in more down or takes away their energy. And it seems and sounds really easy and simple. So just do something good. But many people, they, they're not used to this. And if it's not automatically, they don't know what to do. So usually people think, okay, well, but I don't know in this moment, I'm just sitting home, watching TV, I'm eating chips or going to the fridge all the time. I don't feel like going out at all. And what people can do in this moment, so if you're also listening out here right now, 
just start thinking of what's really missing right now. What do you feel like most? And rather than just being too active, sometimes it's really helpful to get a step back and just allow yourself to do nothing, not to be productive, much more just allow yourself to use the time for whatever comes up, whatever you feel like. Maybe it's painting, it's listening to music, it's drinking a hot tea or coffee, sitting in the sun, just very easy. It can also be riding a bike or be more active, but it doesn't always have to be something with activity. Wow, that's, that's really nice and interesting and very, very simple. Yes, and I think that's why many people don't do it because they think it's too simple and it's not worth <laughs> doing it, but the impact is huge. And if, if you start doing this more and more often, you can develop a healthy habit, which gives you much more power and your focus shifts to what you really want to do. Right, right. So basically what you're saying is take a moment, step back and think what's missing right now. What would I really like to do right now? Simple thing. Get a cup of coffee, sit down, enjoy the sun, go for a small walk, something like that, and then treat yourself to that. Exactly. And also enjoy it. That's the most important one. And enjoy it. Like, um, <laughs> Yes, yes. Sometimes we can't enjoy because we're too stressed and too tense. Right. Very good. That's very interesting. I have an affirmation daily I use that uh, in English it says, um, I'm taking good care of myself today. Mm -hmm. yeah. And just the fact is interesting that I had to put this on an affirmation card to remind myself of it. Just goes to show that what you're saying is absolutely true that we forget to treat ourselves well, even with simple things and to take care of ourselves. And then what happens with the energy? And one of the reasons we usually don't do it as well, it's because we don't have time. You know, now we have a crisis. We, I have import, more important things to do than treat myself well. And um, I just spoke to somebody yesterday and he said, you know, I've been rushing every morning and I, um, my, my thoughts, they are circling in such a bad way that I actually in the end can't really work properly anymore. And we figured out if he would have taken just a moment at the very beginning of the day to shift his mind and do something that he feels good about and that's easy for on him, mm -hmm. that would have changed his whole day. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Let's welcome a couple of guests. We have Katja Hansel here. Simple is great and easy for most people. Okay, thank you, Katya. Harry says, simple things first. Yes, welcome, Harry. Tiffany says hello, and Katie says it's interesting. All right, so ask any question if you want, want Corinne to elaborate on something. Please put them in the comments, and uh, will we, can you see the comments, uh, Corinne? Yes, I can see them. See them, and Sandrine as well? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Keep it simple. Enjoy simple things and treat yourself well. Super powerful. Thank you, Karen. What about maybe you? One more, maybe uh, one last thing to yeah, add, Natalie. Yes, please. Um, sometimes it's also helpful not just to do it in one or two minutes, especially now if we have lots of time. We can also take us some larger islands. It can be a day, uh, two days, where we cut off ourselves from the surroundings and just do whatever we want to do. Mm -hmm. very good thank you i'm gonna go right now bye because <laughs> it's uh, really sunny and beautiful outside <laughs> okay what about you sandrine so yes today i really wanted to focus on the importance of having a growth mindset and if you think about it it's always in relationship with a fixed mindset so i just wanted to start to explain what does it mean for me so for me having a fixed mindset is really like uh, making excuses for not doing something, like saying, oh no, it's not for me, or giving up the first time you try something, or uh, avoiding to take any new challenge, or, or always being afraid to being criticized and judged when you do something, so having a fear uh, of those things. Uh, on the contrary, having a, a growth mindset uh, is really believing that you, you, you can develop any ability through dedication and effort. 
So mm -hmm. viewing effort as something that is an ingredient for, uh, uh, I would say, a path to mastery. Uh, it's also being in this upward spiral of continuous learning. Always want to learn something, even from, from others that could be inspiring. So I will tell you, uh, I think everyone has a PhD at one point in, in their life in a fixed mindset. Whether <laughs> it's work sometime, whether it is health or relationship, we always have a fixed mindset somewhere. So first, I wanted to share my little stories of uh, last week and how I could overcome my fixed mindset. So as you know, I'm a... Sandrine, can you please elaborate a little bit on fixed mindset. What is your understanding of a fixed mindset? So it's when you are, you think like your talent is an innate gift, that it is something that is given to people and cannot evolve. Same for intelligence. So because you have this limiting belief, you think you can never learn anything else or you can't develop in your life. Ah, okay. So fixed mindset is, is a little bit the equivalent of uh, limiting beliefs. Yes, more or less. Yeah. Okay. And, and most of the time, it's like being stuck in something, not knowing what to do after. And it can create also like pain in your body, inflammation, if it goes very far. Right. Yes. Shows in your body. So my experience like speaks of this fixed mindset, mm -hmm. uh, because, you know, I am a coach. I'm coaching online pretty much 90% of the time. But at the, same, at the same time, I'm also a practitioner in hypnosis, but in situ in my cabinet. So it's never online. And I was like, okay, so there is coronavirus. So I stopped my business in hypnosis and it's like that. And I was like, oh, 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 oh. Can you hear this little voice in your head saying, you are not legitimate maybe to do hypnosis online as you are doing coaching or oh, maybe you are master raising coaching, but how could you say you could do hypnosis online? And I was like, hmm, I hear you little voice. Okay. But after that, very quickly, I went into, okay, this is a fact. This is what my little voice is saying, but and, and then what happened? And then I started to investigate online about what could be a great person to inspire me uh, on this journey to uh, online hypnosis. And with synchronicity, as usual, something popped up on my Facebook last week uh, from a colleague saying, hey, there is a great training about hypnosis online if you want to masterize this art from a person who is doing that since 20 years. So I was, okay, let's be inspired by people who are masterizing this topic. And mm -hmm. I went to this training, uh, and it was fantastic, collective intelligence, training with each other, uh, I mean, having uh, tips and realizing that it's very close to what I'm doing already in my cabinet. I mean, apart from playing with the screen, the light, um, like uh, looking at, at, the, at the person differently, uh, it's very similar. So I was like, oh, yeah, I overcome this stuff. And guess what? This week, different per the person comes to me, low of attraction, asking me for online uh, hypnosis. So I was like, oh. Good, uh, excellent. You can so, do this. Yeah, I can do this. So finally, I went to a point of very fixed, like hmm, with a little voice talking. So my first step in my strategy is learning to hear the little voice in your head, this inner saboteur or this imposter talking to you and saying, oh, are you sure you can do that? The second step in my journey was um, uh, really about taking this... Um, Enfin, recognizing you have the choice every time you have a choice either you can be stuck or you can take on new challenges uh, implement different strategy is there's a question of interpretation of the setback or the criticism they are facts but the way you are acting on it can be really different so this is my second step and in the second step also what i like to do is to talk back to myself so if you remember I, the, the internal dialogue started like are you sure you can do that? So All I right. pause and I say to my face, no, I'm not sure I can do that now. The now is very important. And then I say, but I can learn about it and I'm pretty sure I will strive about it. Okay, so before we move to step three, Sunday, let's engage with our audience a little bit. So Kyle Bullis says, my fixed mindset used to make me wear a tie, but a few of my clients do. So I now wear ties a lot less. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you have a lovely striped one on. And earlier you mentioned that it's good to see people dressed up for the camera. What exactly do you mean by that? <laughs> Tomorrow we're going to be all in costumes. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, yeah, it's good to put makeup and dressed up, even if you are at home. I mean, it's compulsory. Like, yes, for sure. It's a team. Yeah, it's true. Uh, by the way, yeah, this, 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 I, I want to share a couple of really good joke sentences later with uh, with you that one of my uh, coaches shared with me. It was really, really funny. One <laughs> relates to pajamas. I'm going to share that with you now. That's, that is really... <laughs> That is really something else. Hold on. Or maybe Hello Kitty slippers. Maybe you don't know I'm, wear, I'm wearing them at the moment. <laughs> yeah, that's true. On the bottom. <laughs> so, so let me ask you guys that who are watching right now, what are, um, do you deal with some Im limiting beliefs right now? You don't have to say what they are, but just type in yes or no in the comments. Because what, what I came across a lot now was people uh, that I connect and reach out to that are saying, yes, they're struggling because they're totally stuck. They can't see the opportunities and they can't do anything online. So like the way I work, I cannot do this online. And then when you start challenging people and questioning a little bit, then they're like, oh yeah, that's true, that's true. So open and widen your perspective when you're stopping your, your little voice or your saboteur. Very good point. Thank you, Sandra. Yeah, and what I can recommend as well is use some time also journaling to just mm -hmm. pause and write about this internet dialogue. So write, for example, the, the inner saboteur voice. What, uh, what he, is she or he, it depends, saying. And you say, okay, maybe you can't do that. And you always start to say, okay, I can't do that now, but this is what I can do. So yes. it's really interesting. And maybe uh, if you look back at this journal, Every mm -hmm. day, maybe you can find maybe common themes or patterns that are always coming to you, the same kind of inner ah, sabotage. Yeah, discover some patterns. Yes, very good. Very good. Okay. So, and some, some of you are enjoying the mask thing and the, the costumes. So, maybe we'll yeah. look at that tomorrow. Let's see if the other speakers are on the <laughs> <great. laughs> Okay, good. And, uh, and the third thing, because in the strategy, there was a third point, is uh, getting into action. Take action. What can you do uh, about it? So it can be taking a new challenges, a little things to learn. Um, like it depends really about where you are. And my recommendation is uh, sometimes we, we take like big step, big decision, while I think it's more recommended to take small and repeated action. Yes. So it's not like a big mountain to, to overcome. Uh, so yeah, so getting into action is very important. So if I summarize, there is like the voice that you need to hear, second, the choice that you need to recognize, and the third step is really about taking action. Yes, take action and do something and baby steps. Yeah, you have to, steps. like you're saying, how do you eat an elephant? Exactly. <laughs> One bite at a time, not, not the whole thing at once. Is there anything you would like to add to this, Corinne? Yep, just a moment. Sorry for that. I had an incoming call. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no calls on this call. <laughs> Can you still hear me? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So um, regarding the, the actual moment with the four walls, I think regarding what you said is that depending on what we are having in our mindset and what we are focusing on right now many people they can't see outside their walls because they can only see what they're not allowed to do and then they get really upset and they they that's what they focus on so really um it helps to to see beneath this so not what it is what i'm missing but what do i want instead and where are my chances i saw a really funny video this morning about a guy in his living room and skiing and skiing yeah. in different yeah. pers perspectives and it was so funny because it, it looked like he's in a mountain and there was so much more creativity and option than just sitting here and being frustrated of not being able to go out yes 100 wow that's really creative skiing in your own apartment <laughs> all right how about you guys on the audience do you have any creative ideas that you're doing right now and welcome, Marlis from Berlin also. Kyle says, limiting beliefs. Yes, some clients who refuse to join webinars or do video meetings because it's only temporary. Look, who knows? They always say it's good to have both. You know, and right yeah. now, internet is working fine. Maybe one day it will be the opposite and we're happy to have offline and online stuff. And another little thing I want to share with you in terms of confinement. This is like confinement in your head. 
Yeah. You have limiting beliefs, you're stuck in those four walls in your head and it keeps getting smaller and smaller and smaller, your space. If you don't challenge yourself ever, you don't go out of your comfort zone, you don't do things that you're a little afraid of. Someone said to me, yeah, I'd love to join your show uh, and speak, but this is something I'm really afraid of. So maybe someday. But exactly okay. those things are the growth of opportunities for you. So whatever you're really afraid of, go and do it very, very often. I mean, unless it's bungee jumping, that's a little silly. But <laughs> we used to say, like, if you are not afraid about your goal, it's probably because it's too small. So yeah, very good. Yes, also very good. Exactly. And yeah, and I wanted to share also like something uh, that I did last week. Uh, I wanted to be creative, and I usually have every six months like an appointment with myself about like uh, what's my strategy for the next six months. And usually I go outside. I organize my little offsite outside of my uh, my normal uh, office, which is my my place actually, uh, for a day of inspiration. Could be in a coffee shop, in a park, uh, something where I can use the environment to inspire myself. And I was like, but I'm here. I'm stuck between those four walls. Ah. So because I'm working in an office, I have, I'm lucky enough to have a, a nice sizable apartment. I went in my uh, living room to do my offsite to organize everything, a pretty nice setting, post it everywhere. Uh, I put like a paper close to each other to do like a big poster. And I start to, I mean, inspire myself just getting in another room in my apartment, which okay. was already a different mindset. So I was like, okay, let's do an upside in my living room. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's very good. <laughs> Thank you. Tiffany says she's doing some activities on the couch to calm the baby James. <laughs> yes, very good, very careful. Carl says be careful not to squash him, Tiffany. <laughs> and Molly says we had a candlelight dinner dressed up for a date. Ah, nice, yes. Yes, exactly. Yes. Your partner, yesterday we had all, it was all about relationships. And um, Alice took took action. Very good. Congratulations. <laughs> All right. Very good. Are there any questions from the audience to uh, our two experts, Chandrin, who is a, a hypnotherapist, and Corinne, who is a specialist in uh, creating a more meaningful life? Summarized. <laughs> any questions before we wrap this up? All right, so what we're going to do tomorrow is I'm going to ask the next speakers if they want to get dressed up <laughs> so we can have a little bit of a different scenery for once. And uh, I'll be happy to see you again tomorrow. So let's end this with engaging in our, our audience. Yesterday we had a word of the day. So today let's, um, let's share... Let's share where you guys are sitting right now. So let's get a little creative. Let's share where you guys are sitting and um, what you're wearing. And I promised you some jokes. So in the meantime, while you can figure out where you're sitting and what you're wearing from the audience, put it in the comments and I will put it on here on the screen. I can share those jokes with you because I thought they were really funny. So speaking of dressing, so what the sheriff thank you very much for sharing that i was laughing this morning when i saw that so he says every few days try your jeans on just to make sure they fit pajamas will have you believe all is well in the kingdom <laughs> and this, this goes well with our theme of dressing up for the camera then the second one was he said, half of, us are, half of us are going to come out of this quarantine as amazing cooks. The other half will come out with a drinking problem. <laughs> That's a little borderline, but it's still funny. <laughs> Number three, I need to practice social distancing from the refrigerator. <laughs> and number five could be one of mine. This morning, I saw a neighbor talking to her cat. It was obvious who thought her cat understood her. I came into my house and told my dog. We both laughed a lot. <laughs> you guys have pets? Unfortunately not, but I'm more and more thinking about it now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good. All right, so let's see where our audience is sitting. All right, so Kyle Bullis has purple striped tie and shirt, bright yellow socks. Very good. Kyle from the Socks Strategy. 
If you uh, don't know the sack strategy, go back a couple of episodes and watch. Oh, yeah, I've seen that. The, you see the, the, so very nice. Very nice. Wallace is sitting in her room with her wizard shirt on. Ah, very good. Tiffany is on the couch, comfy clothes, and baby James. She's wearing baby James. And Marlis is wearing sandals for the beach. Ah, nice. Yeah, it's very warm now. All right, as for me, I'm wearing sweatpants and a T-shirt. <laughs> so I'm not the one dressing up for the camera. And, uh, yeah, so I think this was a really positive, uplifting session. Thank you very much for joining. Would you like to share a quote with the audience, one of your favorite quotes? To finalize and wrap this up. Um, mine can be linked to the gross mindset. It's, it's a quote from Emerson saying, unless you try something beyond what you have already mastered, you will never grow. So it's all about that. I have one as well, but I don't know if uh, unless you try something beyond what you already mastered, you will never grow. Exactly. Emerson. Emerson. Okay. Yeah. Just give me a little second. Okay. Any of your audience want to share a quote that you want to see appear on screen here? Oh, hold on. Is it appearing on screen? Not yet. But it's coming. So yeah. Every difficulty is here to... In every difficulty, there is an opportunity to grow. In every difficulty, there is an opportunity to grow. All right. Very good. Thank you. And that's exactly what we're doing now. Growing as a community, as human beings, as individuals. All right. Thank you very much for joining today and uh, for engaging with us. Thank you for watching. And I'll see you tomorrow, maybe in costumes. Thank you for hosting this uh, nice event. That's nice. Yes, thank you for having us. Yes, you're very welcome. And a wonderful day to everyone. Yes, yeah. have a nice day. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.